The following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. Yeah, we have Tom on t from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, hey it's good. Hi, Tom. How you guys doing? Doing great. Right. Good. Hey, um, your newsletter is outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding. And so is the Ryan Millet. I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, you know, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We would not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 877 927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044. Now your hosts, Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark. Good morning, I'm Nico DeHaan and welcome to Living a Primal Lifestyle where we explore a return to a more balanced, natural, wild world to recover our natural health and regain our rights and freedoms. And it's a beautiful morning in downtown St. Petersburg. It's uh, 77 degrees and sunny. It's going to be beautiful today and... Uh, like to remind you first of all to pick up our health signals newsletter brand new issue out here so pick that up that starts with the spatial orientation we were talking about last week how uh, navigating with these devices uh, kind of shuts down part of the brain it's a very interesting read got a lot of other stuff in there of course our primal edge please pick that up it's eighty nine dollars to your door every single month and this has over three hundred and ten organic cell ready liquid ingredients that are all powered by humic and fulvic acid to get the good stuff in and the bad stuff out and of course we're taking your phone calls at eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight the page is out she's uh, out for a couple of weeks with uh, her son out in Lake Tahoe so hope she's enjoying herself and get out there and get plenty of exercises and out in the woods so that's uh, can't be bad for sure wanted to start this morning I got a letter from one of our uh, uh, an email <laughs> don't get too many letters these days anymore but uh, Adeline had uh, sent this to me a couple of weeks ago I believe she said uh, hi Nico and Paige I thought you'd be interested in spreading the word on grass-fed beef and this petition I would hope that the primal folks would be aware of this and this the deadline is commencing on uh, August 17 2018 uh, Addie says here in recent years the uh, US uh, grass-fed ranchers have faced increasing competition from imports and as estimated 70 to 80 percent of grass-fed beef on the US market is imported uh, with an undetermined portion deceptively labeled as the product of USA and how this works uh, we have a special uh, thing in here as long as you're importing the meat as a whole animal or large cuts of the animal and it's finished here in other words chopped up and put in the packages here then you can label it as a product of the United States so that is deceptive I certainly like to know where my meat comes from and uh, we certainly have some great places in the United States Canada Mexico uh, other places that have good meat but uh, some of the big uh, countries that are shipping a lot are both Australia and New Zealand because they're really known for pretty much just doing grass-fed completely they don't have any large factory especially in New Zealand I know of no large factories at all that does anything with their food over there so everything pretty much in New Zealand is grass-fed as far as I know I may be wrong on that but uh, <clears throat> Uh, it says here that grass-fed beef is one of the few positive in a worsening agricultural economy. 100% grass-fed beef sold under a third-party certified label offers uh, ranches up to a 50% premium for those who sell directly and up to 25% for those who sell in supply chains, according to the uh, Stone Bar Barnes Center of Food and Agriculture. There are now estimated 3,900 grass-fed cattle producers, up from just 100 in 1998. So in the 20 years, that's a big jump. <clears throat> Retail of grass-fed beef are doubled each year, growing to from 17 million in 2012 to 272 million in 2016. U.S. consumers are seeking out grass-fed beef for a variety of reasons, including health. I don't know what other reason they would be. I guess the health of the animal. Uh, Grass-fed beef has significantly better omega-6 to 3 ratio. And this is the ratio we always talk about, that uh, the more you feed animals, the corn 
and the soy and all these type of agricultural foods that they really don't have exposure to at all in the wild except maybe for a couple of weeks when they're eating maybe those seeds are there but they certainly don't grind up the seeds and make a staple out of them they just uh, pretty much chomp on those things and most of them remain whole and then uh, when they poop them out uh, nice fertilizer there so that's this is the way nature has worked for hundreds of years and we've really stopped that whole chain haven't we in recent years, U.S. Uh, grass-fed ranchers have faced increasing competition from imports, an estimated 70, 80 percent, so I read that earlier. So uh, while a requirement to establish rules for mandatory cool, now this cool is the, uh, what the heck is this? I just lost it here. The country of origin labeling. That's C-O-O-L, they call that. And this was uh, in uh, 2015 they proposed this. So this is a farm bill, the first proposed in 2002 farm bill. Uh, and uh, the meat industry launched a series of legal challenges, lobbying efforts, and supported two trade disputes at the World Trade Organization, both of which determined that U.S. rules on cool constituted a barrier to trade. Congress then passed legislation to repeal the mandatory cool in the fall of 2015. Uh, and finalized it in February of 2016. No meat companies follow voluntary labeling rules, and there are cons uh, concerning signs that have some taken advantage of the product of USA loophole. So what a lot of the companies will be doing is selling their meat that comes from other countries as U.S. meat. So it's not a good thing for sure. A uh, 2010 Consumer Reports poll found that 93% of Americans want mandatory country of origin labeling on their meat. 2016 survey by Consumer Reports that's found that 74% want to know the origin of their food. This just makes a lot of sense. The undermining of the U.S. grass-fed market goes beyond ranchers and consumer. There's growing evidence of significant environmental benefits from sustaining managed grass-fed systems. So this is definitely increasing worldwide. I think that's a good thing. I think that definitely they should straighten out some of this stuff with the labeling because I'd like to really know if it's, and I have no problem eating meat that comes from uh, um, Australia, it comes from other countries, as long as I know where it's coming from and so I can keep up uh, and find reports on the World Wide Web what actually what's happening in these countries so I can see that uh, we are getting good stuff or not. Uh, I certainly don't want to get my meat from these large factory farms which started springing up in, after World War II. And this has been really the demise of the, the food in the United States and then, the, of course, the propaganda of eating carbohydrates, which we'll get into. I did want to mention, folks, that uh, Health Signals newsletter uh, got a brand new issue out here, and uh, we talked a lot, a lot about the things we talked about in the last couple of weeks. Some of the things like three hacks to help your brain learn stuff faster, very interesting. Uh, how to treat every type of insect bite and sting, we covered that last week. Carbs versus fat, what, what is the optimal fuel for the body? Uh, some other things like sleeping, why you should sleep on your side, according to experts. Electric Universe, uh, there's over 600 papers confirming the major solar impact on climate. In other words, that uh, we don't control the climate as consumers because of what we do to the air. It's actually the sun, and there, this goes pretty much in depth on that. Stick around, folks. i got a lot more. Writing prescriptions to play outdoors. This is a, a type of thing that you really need to get to be caught up on. So it's $10 a month, $5 an issue uh, on the first and third Tuesday every month. Stick around, folks. i got a lot more. The number here is 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. 
We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Back to the show. So I want to go over a few different articles that I found in the paper in the last couple of weeks that talk about diet and what we should and shouldn't be doing. So I thought we'd de deconstruct these uh, as we go. The first one is, is the paleo diet right for you? And there's a byline here, uh, which doesn't cover. It says, why take advice from a caveman? This was written in the New York Times by Jane Brody on August 6, 2018. It seems these days that every third person I meet is either already on the paleo diet or trying it. Their goals are either weight loss, better health, but it's certainly not to save the planet, she says. The main premise of the paleo diet, if the caveman didn't eat it, you shouldn't either, but does this sound like nutritional advice? So she gives out three basic facts here. The first thing, there's no such thing as a paleo diet. The Paleolithic era lasted 2.5 uh, 2 million years and involved different and continuing evolving evolving populations with a wide dietary range determined by climate, geography, season, and availability. And that's certainly true, definitely by climate, definitely by geography, because if you live up north, it's a lot different than when you live on the equator. And of course, seasonally and availability is what we always talk about. Uh, we talk about seasonally and, of course, locally. That way you're sure you're in season, because if you're getting something from Chile, that's at the other side of the world where they're having winter. Number two, humans, beings today, and uh, the composition of the foods they eat are not the same as they were in the paleo time. Genetic changes in breeding have resulted in a very different organism for both. That's true. The food has changed, and so have we. And number three, there have been no studies of large groups of people who have followed the currently popular versions of the diet, uh, the paleo diet, for decades to assess the long-term health benefits. And I suppose if you take it literally, that is true. But if we go back and look at the Western Price, uh, over a 20-year period visited indigenous people who were still eating their same food. And we know what he found. He found very little consumption of carbohydrates. 
uh, that we eat today. None of them processed, all of them just strictly from the seas and then from the land where they live. They ate mostly, uh, started with the animal proteins, whether it was fish or shellfish or whether it was land animals, it really didn't make any difference because most of these things were wild at that time and very little domestication. Remember that we have talked about uh, domestication being around 10,000 years ago, but maybe we're even pushing that back because I've re been reading articles in the past few weeks where they found bread uh, in its form of bread that may be as uh, high as 14,000 years ago. So that's pushing it back. And they've all also found some farming areas maybe 14 or 15,000 years ago. So who really knows when man started? He probably started when he had to start. When the other food was running out, you start coming up with ways of, of eating that you have never done before. And if it's successful, you're going to tell your neighbors, your tribe, you're going to tell everybody about it. Look what I did. We survived. Look at these people who died. They didn't have this. I mean, it just makes a lot of sense. Also, she says here, keep in mind that the life expectancy of people before the advent of agriculture 15,000 years ago rarely reached or exceeded 40. I think this is more like an average where a lot of child uh, uh, children died when they were very young and certainly we had certain traumas but the wild is not as wild as you think I mean if you go camping for extended periods of time out in the bush you know that uh, there's a few threats out there but not that many threats and maybe there were a lot more when uh, you know 15,000 or 20,000 years ago we really don't know that but man has survived we know we we can take care of ourselves pretty amazingly we can run a lot better than most of the animals we can run longer we have much more endurance we have a lot more smarts to outwit predators so you know it's it's true in a way but maybe not and she says there's one, uh, one basic premise of the paleo diet that could benefit everybody's health, avoid all foods that are packaged and processed. And that's really, I think, the basis of the paleo diet. If it's, pa if it's processed, if it's packaged, it's probably not that good for you. So that's, this is what we would try to stay away from. The other thing, too, is uh, the natural uh, ingredients in the food is a lot different. So if we animals are eating naturally from their own diet, it's going to be a different type of animal than we have today where we have cows that eat grass. Yeah, that's maybe close to uh, saying this is really healthy for you, but it's certainly a lot different than the American buffalo that the uh, American Indian knew was far superior uh, in its fat content. Uh, that big hump was a lot of fat, and this is what our ancestors uh, really wanted. Uh, Avoid all foods that are uh, packaged or processed. And I give some examples here. Breakfast, uh, boiled salmon, a uh, three-quarter cup of antelope. Uh, uh, for lunch, uh, boiled lean pork. Uh, for dinner, a uh, lean. So everything is lean on here. So this, these are not the types of things that I consider would be part of the primal or paleo diet because I First of all, I want that piece of uh, meat, whether it's from a fish or something, it doesn't really matter. Another thing that she, they didn't mention in here, if, it's, if you're, you have the ability to eat it raw, then it's probably really healthy for you. If you don't have the ability, and uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago I was talking about the beans, legumes, peanuts, and things like that that grow on the vines. These cannot be eaten raw. It gives you a clue. The reason they can't be eaten raw, they have a lot of anti-nutrients in them. They have a lot of stuff that this, these seeds don't want to be eaten. So they throw a lot of things in there to deter animals from eating it, and you won't find many animals eating those things. Um, and most of the time they can eat them whole. So if they eat them by accident uh, while they're eating something else, it's not a big deal because it goes right through them. And if we did that, it probably wouldn't hurt us either. But if we start grinding them up and using them for, as a staple, then again, once in a while, probably doesn't hurt you. My wife and I go out for sushi now and then. There's a little bit of white rice on there, and we may ha eat some of that rice. We may not. I know that white rice is probably the least harmful. I mean, all of this is a piece of starch. They've taken those bad things out of there, like the brown rice has in it. All these anti-nutrients, the lectins, the stuff that's hard to digest. So we're just left with the starch, and that's not too bad. 
Uh, another thing here is, is it practical? How many people are trying to get their kids off to school in the morning and themselves ready for work and take time to broil salmon? There's a lot of things that you can do uh, to make a lunch healthy for a kid, and you don't have to, to go to extremes to boiling salmon. You can certainly have uh, things that are left over from the from the meal before. You can fix them uh, boiled eggs. There's many things. Uh, the only thing you probably don't want them to do is the, uh, to eat lunch at school. Uh, and it says here also not all paleo diets are not equally uh, nourishing. Of course, different types of seasons would bring on a different type of effect. Um, it says here those who choose the ancestors of the Inuits as their guide would be mostly eating meats and seafood and few fruits or vegetables which uh, grow poorly in the Arctic. Uh, so there's a lot of facts in here that are true, but I th it looks like this article is trying to discourage you from going this route. Uh, they suggest going to the Mediterranean diet, which has less, and they don't really like uh, the idea that you may be having some processed meats like bacon, which is a processed meat, but it may be very low processed, and certainly bacon has that really good saturated fat in it that our body really needs. Another thing they say in here is that uh, the, you can depend on plant, uh, plant proteins like peas and things, and uh, you know, I don't agree with that at all. Then it goes into other things here. So uh, stick around, folks. I'll be right back. Uh, I've got a lot more for you here. The number here is 877-927-6648. While you're out, please pick up some of the Primal Edge. We'll be right back. like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of performance training since 1998 Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically as a certified personal trainer Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions the performance training studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balanced results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com. Let him know you heard him on TFNN and save up to $100 on a special package just for TFNN listeners. Act today. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. 
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And welcome back to the show. Uh, Paige is out in the uh, woods of uh, California uh, in Lake Tahoe with her son. So I wish her well, and she'll be back in a couple of weeks. So uh, next article I've got here from the uh, Popular Science, and this is pre please do not try to survive on an all-meat diet, something that uh, I'm pretty close to, actually. I pr probably maybe 85 to 95 percent of our meals are meat, and when we have some vegetables, is generally something like a pickle, sour pickle, or something that's fermented, things like that. So uh, it says here, if you love ribeyes, uh, uh, you'd perhaps be interested in the carv carnivore diet. The rules are simple, eat only meat, and the benefits seem uh, boundless. More energy, uh, less body fat, you can even cure Lyme disease, depression, and rheumatoid arthritis. So the proponents say, including Sean Baker, a former orthopedic surgeon who has been one of the biggest public advocates for consuming only meat. Other high-profile members of the Carnivore Club, uh, while well, they name a lot of people here, that's really not important. Uh, one of the things that they say, let's uh, start some of the downsides. Uh, they say that uh, carbs are bad for you, of course. So we, I kind of agree that carbs probably are the, the culprit most of the time, but not all the time. Uh, there are some nutrients you just can't get from meat, they say in here, and they uh, always go to the uh, folate, uh, vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin A, uh, but these things, uh, I mean, meat has no fiber. That's another thing they, they say, you know, there's, there's an issue with fiber. And uh, Paige and I have talked a lot about fiber, and of course, uh, my diet for the last 10 years has been very low on fiber and seemed to be do, doing quite well. In fact, I'm more regular going to the bathroom than I've ever been. Uh, it's just once in the morning, and that's about it for me. Of course, I only eat two meals a day, usually, uh, and uh, maybe that has something to do with it, too. But I'm really regular. My digestion is really good. Digestion is really good. And I feel good, and uh, at the you know I'll be 74 next month, so uh, that uh, to me is a good uh, indication for myself. Whether this happens to other people, I'm not sure. But my wife is right on board, and she looks fantastic. She's just a year younger than I am, and uh, she's living the high life too. So you know we feel really good about what we're doing, and when we see things like this, please do not try these things. Uh, I think you have to do a little due diligence on yourself and read some of these things. And I hearken back to uh, something that we brought up years ago, which was the uh, uh, the Inuit paradox. Uh, and in here they say, uh, uh, the imagine the gross uh, vitamin deficiencies that arise from a diet that has any fruits or vegetables. What uh, furnishes vitamin A, vital uh, for your eyes? Uh, we derive much of our uh, vitamin A from plant foods uh, while you know uh, vitamin A which is an oil soluble has uh, and there's plenty uh, plentiful in any kind of oil the cold water fishes and the sea mammals this is of course where cod liver oil high in vitamin A come from so vitamin D of course comes in these oils also these are all fat soluble same with uh, E these are fat soluble so if you're eating fat from an animal you're getting these things automatically vitamin C or sorbic acid is something that is produced in the liver and uh, we don't produce it uh, most animals do so we need to get this and they think that uh, the Inuits probably got it from the, maybe the skin of the whales, but they're really still not sure how they got this. But, uh, and I remember, they ate their steaks and a lot of these things like that raw, which I think has something to do with it. Let me get back to this article here. Many proponents of the protein-dense diets like this point to the cultures that have historically eaten mostly or entirely meat. If they can be healthy, why can't we? And they cite the Inuits here. They starve off scurry by feasting on collagen, rich vitamin C, dense whale skin, and other fresh, uncooked meats. In other words, when you're chewing on these meats, the oils in there uh, make you uh, uh, get the vitamin C, whereas you cook it, then the vitamin C uh, gets it. Of course, they said you could take uh, these days, we can take supplements, and certainly we do that. Uh, red meat is problematic for your colon and for your heart. Uh, and I've seen no studies on this. Most of these studies that we see uh, 
red meat is actually what they're talking about is packaged meat, meat that is uh, usually processed. But also, there's no studies right now doing uh, anything on the grass-fed meat and meat of years ago. When they're talking about taking fast food or stuff that comes from a normal grocery store and doing testing on those things. And that's completely different than if you start testing people on the meat that is wild or raised traditionally like we like to do it, like uh, send them out to pasture. Uh, another thing here, it says if you're eating only meat, you're probably getting, you're taking in fewer calories. And this is why most likely you uh, lose fat. So why do, would we be taking in less calories with meat? Because meat has a lot of calories in it, and certainly fat is loaded with calories. The reason is because the natural fat in the meat it gives us the satiety. So in other words, we're much more satisfied, you eat a lot less. And if you start with the meat, and if you have vegetables, fine, but if you just start with the meat and eating that, and just go till you're pretty much satisfied with the meat and then eat your vegetables if you want to. That's the way I would recommend doing it. So if you're looking to lose weight, cutting calories is obviously a good thing, but you don't, uh, but you need to do it in a sustainable way. Studies consistently show that people who lose five to seven pounds per year on a new diet, regardless of the nutritional composition, uh, and that most gain it back later. Uh, it's true because a lot of times uh, what you do is you go back to the way you ate before once you've lost the weight. It has nothing to do with uh, the, this, the, the way you're eating now. Uh, don't eat uh, only vegetables either. Here it says uh, that pretty much any extreme diet is going to be pro problematic. Fruits may be good for you, but if you eat them all the time, then it's going to be uh, other deficiency. And certainly if you're a vegetarian, you're going to be deficient in certain things. Vitamin A is one, K is the other one. Uh, you may be getting uh, uh, some of the other things, but uh, probably the proteins are much, much harder to digest. So I would recommend that uh, if you're going to go all meat, do it very carefully, do it with really high quality meat, and take it easy at first. If uh, you don't feel good on it, back off a little bit. And this is, you know, the, the not feeling good by changing the diet could be a, a number of different things. It could be you're not digesting the food properly. You're not used to this type of food. The other thing could be is that maybe your intake of protein is much higher than you're used to. So that protein is harder to digest. So take it slow in the beginning and find out where you are. Eat the, the protein and, and the fat first and see where you are. Wait 10-15 minutes and then if you want to eat more, you can. And if you're going to eat vegetables, you want to be organic. So, you know, it's not that hard. Uh, you know, these diets uh, and all this information out here seem to make it much more difficult for you if you just take a sensible approach. I recommend going to uh, sites like the Western A. Price site and start getting information from there and find out what our ancestors did because it's sure, for sure, the food was much better a few thousand years ago, even a hundred years ago was better. So we were progressively beginning worse. And, uh, you know, I was uh, listening to a podcast last night and really uh, got my goat because they were talking about. Uh, you know, the vegetarian, this is the way of the future, plant-based proteins. And it was kind of uh, hidden in this uh, University of Southern California, San Diego uh, <coughs> podcast. And uh, it really made me angry. And that's really the reason I'm coming up with this. Anyway, stick around, folks. I got a lot more. And uh, the number here is 877-927-6648 if you'd like to join the program. Otherwise, uh, I'll see you after the break. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. 
Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the X. AU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for the Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN. TFNN, live on your mobile device, 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And welcome back to the show. The other thing that is about eating this meat, and of course, uh, on the... Uh on the program uh, or on that uh, particular uh, sheet there was a picture of a ribeye you know and uh, we talked I think a couple of months back about this couple who ate nothing but ribeyes and their whole family was eating that way and they were doing pretty well not something I'd recommend what I would recommend is eat the whole animal so all these nutritions that they say are lacking in that ribeye or the New York strip or whatever you're fixing uh, is can be found in <clears throat> the pancreas and in the liver and in the heart and in the brains and into these areas uh, you know that we normally don't eat so some of the real chewy gristly stuff we tend to just cut that out and it's really good for our teeth and our jaw to start chewing on some of these things and we get the nutrition from that to help build the very thing you're eating uh, the next uh, one I want to come up with, uh, this article, this is from Apple News and carbohydrates eaten at night, uh, the key to greater weight loss. Uh, this is pretty interesting. Uh, there's some interesting research suggesting that carbs at night may actually lead to fat loss. It may be due to leptin and the insulin connection. Everybody has seen these uh, pudgy rats that are leptin deficient or those who don't produce any leptin at all, known as the fat bastard rats. Lipton is secreted from the adipose tissue and basically tells the brain to stop eating. Lipton is the satiety hormone. We always say that uh, the um, other hormone, um, your um, insulin, is the satiety hormone, and it kind of is because it's this hormone that uh, gets the lipton going. So it's not the fat or anything that goes into your cells. It's actually the... Um, uh, can't even think of the word lipton. Um, the, uh, the what raises your sugar? You know, once or oh, insulin. Excuse me. <sighs> sometimes it just pops in. Sometimes it just pops out. So insulin is the thing that makes the leptin go. So if you're eating carbohydrates, that means your sugar is being raised. That means insulin gets involved, and insulin is the very thing that 
uh, starts the leptin from going into your cells, into your bloodstream, and that is what tells you you're satisfied and happy and not going to eat anymore. Of course, we're not talking about the type of har carbohydrates that are processed like cookies and candy, things like that. We're just talking about vegetables and maybe even a fruit of some kind that's in season at the time. So it's really important to understand that, you know, we're not talking about snacking here. When leptin levels drop, the drop initiates an adaptive response to conserve energy manifested by the increase to food intake, decreasing energy expenditures and suppression of the reproductive testosterone and other uh, endocrines. The, the drop in leptin levels from calorie restriction may also be a signal for reduced testosterone levels. So uh, one of the stimulators of leptin is insulin. When insulin levels are increased acutely, there is an increase in the energy expenditure, decreasing food intake, and basically a reversal of all negative effects of low leptin levels. That's why a cheat meal here and there can help you lose weight process by stimulating the leptin secreting and keeping the metabolism going. So it's in insulin that uh, stimulates the leptin release and that stimulates your satiety, making you less likely to any, eat anything more. Uh, it says here that, uh, let's see, uh, previous studies have described a typical dural a uh, pattern of leptin secreting that falls during the day from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., reaches its lowest level at 1 p.m., and incre increases from 4 p.m., with uh, the peak being at 1 uh, a.m. or 12 midnight. Ironically, this crucial hormone is responsible for satiety is at its highest levels when individuals are sleeping. And this makes sense. That way you're not waking up hungry. And normally if you're waking up with some type of hunger, it may be that your sugar has dropped and that you're on this little roller coaster of sugar and uh, insulin uh, being produced because you're snacking too much uh, with carbohydrates. So the higher le uh, leptin levels during the day is going to keep you your hunger better controlled, so the key is to maintain leptin levels while dieting, yet the role of when carbohydrates are consumed and level levels have not been studied yet. Well, it's been studied a little bit here. Uh, let's see, back to the studies. Researchers from Israel thought that if leptin is high at night from leptin's circadian rhythm, uh, which rises at night, then eating a carbohydrate carbohydrate enriched meal while on a low calorie diet may cause a super spike in insulin that may cause a greater rise in leptin which may lead to a reduced appetite throughout the day. So this is going to help you not only sleep better, you're not going to be hungry, but when you wake up in the morning you're not, not going to be as hungry and slowly that hunger will start to build up. And it may be that uh, breakfast was much, much later in uh, our ancestors. Maybe they didn't eat when they got right up. Maybe we're eating because of that leptin response is not there and that uh, we wake up famished. Uh, and you know, if you're running on fat, your own body fat, then there's no reason why you should be hungry when you wake up. It's only if you're not running on the fat, because plenty, you know, even the thinnest person with uh, a 10% body fat, or 5% even, has enough fat in there to uh, go around for a couple of weeks. So it just makes sense that this system works, and it works very well if we go back to eating the proper way. And they give some examples here. Of course, I'm going to put this in the next newsletter. Two. Another article here about intermittent fasting while I'm on this subject. And this is one of the things, of course, we talk a lot about uh, doing small fasting. And if you're going to bed, say, at uh, 8 or 9 o'clock and you haven't eaten since 6 o'clock, then you wake up at 6 o'clock, there's a good 12 hours, you wait till noon, that's a nice little break there. So if you're going to do some fasting, this is a perfect time to get that 16-hour fast in. And that's a great way of uh, teaching your body when it should be eating, when it's not under control from you, not so much under control from these foods that the factory farms teach us.
And if med fasting may be one of the most effective ways to lose body fat, but there is little research regarding its effect on muscle gain. One form of intermittent fasting is a time-restricting feeding, which utilizes a daily schedule, allowing a limited number of hours in the feeding window and the remaining hours as a fasting window. So if you're going to start eating around noontime and stop around 4 o'clock, that's a nice short uh, 3, 4 hours, and that would uh, be very healthy for you, and studies have shown on this. Researchers had subjects placed on a time-restricted diet consisting of a regular diet. So imagine that. They're, they're doing all these studies on just regular diets, not giving them any particular thing and having really good success. Now imagine if you added great food to this. And you know, that, that's the lack of a lot of these studies. They just study one thing. I'd like to see a study where you know, a whole family for 20 years they've been following and eating a really good type of primal diet that our ancestors may maybe have eaten. Maybe it's a little bit different. Yeah, the, the fruits and vegetables certainly weren't around then, and the animals have changed. But the idea is there. The idea is to eat clean meat, to eat a whole animal so it's nicely sustainable, so you're not wasting anything, and then staying away from packaged and uh, food that's highly processed, uh, staying away from food that has pesticides in it, uh, as, you know, having good clean water and good clean air. Those are the studies that we want to see. And why nobody has started these things? Well, I think a few people have. I think there's a few around, and we've, we've done that. Anyway, stick around, folks. I've got uh, a little bit more for you. I'll be right back. My dad, may he rest in peace, always had great advice, such as, if you want more, you have to become more. It's been a guiding light that has driven me to always be the best that I can be. When it came to trading and investing, I wanted more, and so I developed a set of disciplined tools that led me to become the number one market timer for the S&P 500, according to Timer Digest. Dad went on to say, if you want more, you have to give more, which is why I took those same disciplined tools and created a black box that could look at any instrument for any time frame and tell subscribers and I, whether it was bullish, bearish, where support or resistance was, and whether an instrument was forming a top or a bottom. The scans from my black box are now a part of the Mastering Probability Service, which allows me to give more to subscribers. This coming Tuesday, August 7th, from 5 to 6 p.m., I'm holding an open house at TFNN.com, and I'd like to invite you to see the power of my black box. When it comes to trading and investing, I know I can help you become more, too. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com to sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! No matter where you're listening to TFNN programming, you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones, iPads, and Android devices, located in the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit tfnn.mobi in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and call-in talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
welcome back to the show. This final article is that uh, comes from Business Insider, and uh, there's growing evidence that eating fat won't make you fat, but sugar will. Duh, that's a no-brainer to me. Uh, and, you know, this, this is uh, increasing for sure. Uh, people are starting to wake up to the fact. In many parts of the world, the two ingredients are rarely eaten alone. Take a donuts, for example. When the fresh-laden dough is deep-fried in oil, you get a classic combination of sugar and fat with a rich flavor, powerful mouthfeel that's tough to pass up. I'll pass that up any day. That's dough. Of course, this is the most processed dough, is processed uh, seeds from grass seeds, okay? And then they put it in oil. Usually oil these days, I think in the old days, they used to uh, at least use lard, very healthy. Now they're using peanut oil, soy oil, or whatever, some kind of vegetable oil, not healthy at all, uh, really poisons your body, already rancid before they even start to use it. And of course, then they put sugar on top of it. And uh, you know, we know what happens. If in, in the previous uh, section, we were talking about how the uh, uh, carbohydrate comes in and here we're talking sugar and we're talking dough and frying it in uh, cheap cheap oil which has uh, really a negative impact so uh, what happens is of course the sugar is spiked and then insulin comes in and then insulin usually will uh, uh, give you the satiety because of the leptin because but that doesn't really happen because what's happening in, in your body when you eat that donut is your body is now under attack. Your body really thinks this is something it needs to get rid of fast. So it bypasses pretty much everything. It's going to shove it into a fat cell as fast as possible. Of course, it's trying to burn it, but it can't burn it fast enough because this is, a, this is like rocket fuel. So you're taking the fat and the sugar that's being processed into fat also. So you've got a double package of fat there with the in insulin and just amount of, as much insulin so you, then you can say that's fat too and that's shoved in and leptin probably is not even registering and this is where uh, you're going to have a deficiency sooner or later if you keep on this bandwagon so as we said before, if you're eating uh, a little protein in the morning or if you're just fasting in the morning, you don't have that problem of the spiking. So this is a good way to go. So. Now we're really t talking about, so the conclusion is even worse when you people try to trim fat from their diets. And normally this is what happens too. So now you're eating a piece of meat and you see the fat on it and you're going to trim that off. Uh, because you're probably worried that it's going to accompany all that sugar that you ate in the morning. And you're probably right there. So it's not a good way to eat. Uh, many uh, ready-to-eat items in the low-fat category are, par are packed with sugar and carbs. Even the ones that are, say, low sugar, they've got something in there to fool your brain, to fool your body into thinking that it's sugar. Your body really doesn't know any different. It may be worse because this builds up much more toxins. So studies suggest that both of these ingredients are linked to weight gain, strongly linked. A review of 50 studies on diet and weight gain published in the journal Food and Nutrition Research found that on the average, the more refined grains somebody eats, like processed cereals and granola bars and such, the more weight they tend to gain over a study period. So while low-fat products are marked as weight loss tools, the reality is that these products may contribute to more weight gain than fat rich products like with fewer refined carbs. So just like uh, Paige said, in Europe, you see everybody there after dinner with a little ice cream cone, small little ice cream cone, not like they heap it up here. It's a whole different way of eating, and it's much more satisfying. You can eat much more diversity when you're on the paleo or primal or ancestral style diet. The take-home message here is that fat is a crucial dietary ingredient, while sugar, despite being omnipresent in dozens of everyday foods, is not. This means while it takes more work to curb your sugar intake, the available evidence suggests that it's more worthwhile than fighting and trimming the fat. So true. Thanks for sticking around, folks. Uh, we have uh, Jason, I think, up at the 8.30 today, brand new show here on TFNN. Uh, it's called the uh, Morning Market Kickoff. So join him at 8.30, and uh, I'll be back next week. Page is out, so no Thursday show this week. See you next time. Bye-bye.
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com.